Welcome to Wayne's World and Kelly Video Podcast. How are you doing today, Mr. Kuhn? Uh, I'm doing quite well, Wayne. <laughs> okay, I get it. Don't worry. Next time I'm going to get this a little bit better. So what's been going on? What's been going on with you in the week since we last had our uh, guest star? I tell you, I've been busy. It's um, business is wide open in, in South Florida, and we have definitely. I I my phone's ringing. Matter of fact, I'm silencing right now because I forgot to silence. Silence your phones, please, everybody. Um, right. But uh, and, and I'm, I'm getting a lot of good stuff. A lot of uh, a lot of exciting things are going on. A lot of good business. Um, a friend of mine, Rudy, um, who you know, um, used to be with the our, one of our sponsors, Stay Money and Painting. He services all of Florida. Um, he he uh, left the company to go work for M two E. Look at this. Check this out. What even plan? He went to go work for M two E, which is an wow. engineering firm. It is also an owner's rep, and they work in direct competition with LGC, my company. Um, okay. and, and I, Rudy's one of my favorite people other than you on the planet and, and a couple hundred others or thousands, maybe, but Rudy, Rudy and I have become really good friends and we're, we have a lot of mutual respect in business and Rudy has now gone to work for M2E where he's going to be a, a direct competitor. Um, um, give a shout out to, uh, Amicon, another one of my big competitors, Jonathan. Hey buddy, if you're watching, um, uh, sorry, you're too scared to go fishing with us tomorrow. But um, what we'd like to do and what I want us to talk about in a, in a future show and definitely have those guys on is talk about how you can be direct competitors. I mean, my, my, uh, my income, some people think is directly related on how successful my competitors are. They do more, I do less. We don't, you and I, because we talked about it before the show, we're not going to tell, I'm not going to pretend like this is all spontaneity, but most of it is. We are friendly competitors because we want in the owner's rep world and in every other business out there, we want people to always do better, better, and better. Um, and I'm excited. I mean, people go, did you hear, you know, are you and Rudy still going to be friends? I'm like, well, I, we're, we, if we could be any better friends, we will be because I want him to be successful. I, I think the world of M2E on their engineering and on their owner's rep side, and I want them to do well because when people do business in our arena, we want to make sure they're successful. And we don't, I don't want to beat out to people that just aren't any good at what they do. I want those people to get out of business, but I want the good companies to be successful and do well. And so that's, that's, uh, that's how my week's going. How's your week going? Well, it's, it's going really good. And um, my son had his, uh, his college orientation yesterday. So now I'm looking at uh, I'm him leaving the nest and, and starting on on his journey. Can you hear that but, sound? What's that? Can you hear that sound? No. It's tons of money pulling out of your pocket going into the school. I'm just kidding. Go ahead. <laughs> yeah, no, you're right. And it's it's actually interesting about the topic of money and about competition. And so I know money can be a very divisive topic with people. Um, it definitely elicits an emotional reaction. Um, at some time in your career, or maybe you've already heard this before, but um, people will say, you know, when is enough enough? Well, it's, it's a zero sum game. If you really think about it, you know, somebody wins and somebody loses money. Okay. But really, you know, money itself, it's, it's not lost or made. It's simply transferred from one perception to another. So if you look at it that way, as far as we're in a universe of abundance and not scarcity, and you had talked about a guy that you're, you're, you're wishing very well on his journey to be a good competitor of yours, which is an important topic to talk about because it elevates our own, our own game. Sure. If you look at the if you look at the American auto industry in the 1980s before competition was allowed, I know you used to sell cars. In my opinion, during that time period, cars were not very well made in America. Only when competition was allowed on a global basis forced the U.S. auto industry to up their game and be able to market much better cars that we have today to compete on a global basis. So if you take that and you put it in a micro level in the arenas that we play in, servicing our clients in the multifamily arena, competition is not only a good thing, it's a necessary thing. 
Absolutely. And good competition. Um, you know, I've got companies out there or, or mom and pop shops, as we call them, it might be one or two or three people that will go out there and they will offer our services as a full service owner's rep service, project managing, you know, a restoration, beautification uh, project, promising the world, but they can't deliver. It's just as they don't either have the, the experience, the knowledge, or the capacity. And that hurts us. Um, as an industry, um, you know, anytime anybody comes in with, you know, they go, oh, you know, we can do it for this price. And then uh, someone else comes in and says, we can do it for this. Well, this looks very attractive at first, but then you got to see, what am I going to get for that? What I don't want and what Rudy's going to find out he's not going to want, and Jonathan over at Amicon, we don't want for someone to start a project and six months later, go back to the well and go, well, let me look at these other bids that we had. And maybe we need to engage them instead. So many bad things already happen. I'd rather avoid that. I would rather lose to a good quality company and let them carry the project all the way through because there's more business out there for us to handle. Um, I lost a deal, allegedly, I, I call it lost a deal. We, we weren't awarded a contract six, eight weeks ago with a property down in, in Miami and they bid it for you know, less than 50% of what we bid a month. But what they're going to deliver is going to be a disaster for that property. And, you know, I sound like a salesman saying that, but there's just no way it's too big of a project, too many moving parts. Nobody could deliver that project well with, with the money that they're charging. And that's, that to me is reckless. You know, in, in your world, if someone comes in and says they can do, uh, you know, deliver roofs for half the price, there's something wrong there. Something doesn't add up. Common sense has got to come into play. So in the sales process that you're talking about, uh, what is your method as far as if you know, uh, you know, one of the things that gives me reason to pause is someone says, well, we just want to let you know it's, it's not all about the money. Well, a lot of times it is. So then you're going to have to Taylor, make your presentation and your message to, to deliver on value. How do you discern and talk about that when you're in front of a board? I say the question again. <laughs> How do you discern the method? How do you, Kelly Kuhn, deliver a message of value versus price? Okay, okay. Um, I, I really didn't understand the question. I was like, what did you just say? Um, you know, we have to talk about it all the time. We talk about it for what our deliverers are going to be for clients. What are we going to serve them during the process of their, of their project? But I, I also like to talk about it on what we're going to deliver as far as when we're looking at engineers, when we're looking at GCs, you know, what, what if we're looking at a roofing job, we're not going to sit there and put out several bids and then choose the, less, the least one. First, we're going to put out a really well-defined scope of work for that project to where, and we're going to make sure that on the bids, when we get them back, that, that everything's in there. There's not going to be any missing elements. But then we're vetting the client. I'm sorry, we're vetting the GC. So we're making sure, you know, you know what, what's their insurability? What, what are their lawsuits against them? What are their viable lawsuits against them? You know, there's a, you know, how many employees do they have? There's so many factors come involved that price is always important. So we try to explain to them even before they hire us. I, you know, when I say I, I mean my, our team, when we're out visiting clients before they do business with us, we give out a lot of valuable information. You know, they say information's free, you get what you're worth. We actually give them a lot of good information, probably too much. But because we want them to have a good project. But so if you sit there and just go, well, let's put out a bid and, and choose the lowest price every time, you're, you're, you're designed for disaster. And it's going to be the same thing when you're hiring anybody. I don't want to go to a doctor that is a discount doctor if I have a, if I have a serious medical issue. Right. If I'm getting worked out of my house, I don't want to get somebody to come into my place that isn't bonded, insured, and has a good track record. I want to see their references. I want to know what they've done in the last year, two, five, 10, 20 years. You know, there's a reason why people like us because of our experience. You know, they'll okay. come up and talk to us about something and it's different 
because we've been on the planet for over 50 years. I'm about to hit 60. I know you're much closer to 50, but you know, there's there's value in that. And but they have to do their homework and we have we do the homework for them. But when they're like when they're hiring us, I want them to make sure they understand who are they hiring. So if you're hiring somebody who doesn't have the bandwidth and experience and team to execute a good job for them, it's on them if they make a bad mistake, but it's on it's incumbent on you and I to deliver the information to them like you were asking correctly to make sure they can make well-informed decisions, whether they're hot, whether when they're hiring us or all the way through the process, because our entire job is to serve up great information so the board can make great decisions. We're not making all the decisions for them. We're giving them all the information so they can. So we have to, I do the, I go with the same mindset when I go meet a client. Yeah, it's, 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 it's high end consultative selling is what you do based on the company that you own in your team. Um, definitely high end, good exchange of information that you have to have with the board to, to garner their trust. And the vetting process that you had talked about is, is high end, high, high level, high end engagement, not easy to do in the sales world that we reside in. Absolutely. And our team has experience in to, to vet properly and, and, and some of them, they just serve them up. And it's, you know, I actually, I did not get a contract a couple months ago and then an intermediary got in touch with me and said, Hey, who would be the best five GCs for this type of project? And, you know, so I asked a couple of questions, where is it size of the building? What's the name of the building? And it was somebody who is starting up an owner's rep firm and they they're not equipped to do it. And I'm sorry, they're just not, you've got to have the right team. I could not be an owner's rep. It's not what I do. Now, James and George and Jen and my, you know, and then and their, my whole team, they know what they're doing. But I partnered up with people that had a ton of experience. That's extremely important. If it was just me going out there and doing it, I have no value doing that. I can do a lot of other things. And I, you know, I'm the recruiter and I bring in business to my company, but it's everybody else in my team that can actually deliver what we offer to our clients. Um, and I, and I, I'm very, I'm very vocal about that with my clients too. I've had people go, well, we want you to be the owners up on the project. I go, I really appreciate that, but no, you don't, you know, you want me to screw up an Excel spreadsheet, <laughs> put one in front of me, you know? So th th there you get, everything's got to be transparent and clear. And so here, here, not, here's a price question. should be the, the you, if you want money to be protected, then you better as a, as a board, do the right job of vetting who you're talking to and making sure they have the experience, not only in construction and project management, but also in, you know, owner occupied properties. That's a huge difference in a commercial or an industrial building. Okay. Here's a tricky question for you regarding the sales process. When you're in engagement with the board, how do you overcome objections? I know it's kind of a broad based statement and it, it only happens in the moment, but give me an example of, of an objection that you have faced and how you have overcome it throughout your sales career and specifically where you're at right now. I think I, the easiest way to overcome any objection is having the experience to know the answer and having right. the answer that's the truth, not what the client wants to hear. And we get, I, I, we get that still a lot. We, they they want to go one direction. Hey, we're, we're, you know, some of us on the board want this and that. And I, I, I've mentioned it a lot. I don't do Disney World in this world. I just do Jurassic Park. We deal as a team from everybody in the company, especially me. I can't go out and talk to our clients. And usually um, James, my partner, he's engaged and George will be engaged in the process before we go to contract. Then after, they don't see me much. They see the rest of my team. There better be a 100% parallel what I say to a client yep. to what, what we're delivering. And, and, and we do that. And one way we do it is we'll bring people on our team to some of the meetings, whether it's in person or on Zoom, just so they can witness. Because I want them to know what we're saying, you know, because I think sometimes there's always, you know, oh, geez, what, it's, what, is, what are they selling for us to do? 
we are in lockstep in that parallel. Um, I'm not sure if that really answers your objection question. I, the objections I get, a lot of times they'll say, you, you, you're too much. Shocking. No matter, no matter what, I, I love to say at the grocery store, whenever they ring it up, I go, I'm sorry, that's too much. <laughs> and they look at me like, right. they don't know what to say. And it's just self, I, I get a laugh out of it. They, you, they don't understand. I, I'm handling that is saying, let me explain to you that five of my project managers on the team, not my senior team, but five members of my project management team have over 100 years of experience. They are well compensated for their knowledge so they can deliver for our clients. As a, as a business, we, make, we can make choices. We can either bring in a very young staff in experience and pay them less, which is still a lot, or you can pay them a lot more and have ones that have that experience. In our realm of business and what we're doing, we need to have those very high experienced people to deliver our services. So, I, I, so, I, the, the, so that's, that's very popular as you go out. And it's always too expensive. I, I swear if I told people we were a dollar a month, well, can you do 50 cents? I mean, it's just, an, it's natural for people. Um, I tell people if it's not enough, you better look at it. If I've got five proposals from a GC to do a concrete restoration job, and they're at 2 million, 2 million, 2 million, 2 million, and then one of them's at 1 million, I want, there's a problem. And, I, and we're going to figure it out why it is. We, you know, there's something obviously missing on that bid for them to be so out of whack on the price. What What's your opinion? So there's a, there's a school of, uh, there, there are several large companies in the United States that, that build a sales philosophy called um, objection-based selling. Um, we engaged a company probably about 12 or 13 years ago, spent a lot of money to teach objection-based selling. And a, another term for it is process-based selling. And here's what it basically is. It, it boxes the buyer into a corner because everything that they say, you have to come back with a counter um, um, statement. And it didn't take to me at all because it automatically puts you in an adversarial position of trying to get someone to change their mind. And it did not work with me. So I, I, know I, the I want you exact method you're talking about. And I've been yeah. introduced to that in the past as well. I don't like it at all. Cause that's, no, I, that's, that's, that's that to me, that's not selling. And I, I'm not trying to sell my not. services. I'm trying to offer my services and collect decisions. And I don't care right. if someone says yes, no. I, you know what I don't like is maybe. Those maybe, right. holy smokes, pack a lunch on that one. But I, you know, it, we have, I've got two. I've got a corral. I just got a, a text while we started from a guy who just he interviewed with me. And he just interviewed with with James and George, and he was just thanking me and saying, "Hey, it went really well." I've got this very talented individual who wants to join our team, and. So I've got to focus on what's going on in the next 30 days in my business. When I get ones that are just kicking tires on or just can't make decisions to save their soul, I don't have time for it. But also in that method of selling, if I've got to sell somebody on my services, that means Kelly's going to be engaged forever on that project. That's right. not what we need to do. I would rather if they're, if they're iffy, don't choose us. Use right. somebody else. We're not... And I tell them, listen, sometimes, you know, you just, it's got to be a good fit. We, we're not always going to be a good fit. I think we're the best in the business. I know you think your company's the best in the business. And I think we do have great businesses, but sometimes it's just not going to be a good fit. Don't you so think that the be, best, I, I don't want to close them. Uh, right. I mean, to me, the best relationships are effortless. We put our best foot forward. And if at any point in this process of engagement, that I have to convince you of anything, okay? That's that's probably where we are gonna have to part ways. It could say a lot about me not delivering the message. It could say a lot about them going and feeling kind of wishy-washy or, or maybe about it. I understand that. But the whole bottom line here is, I believe in, in the sales cycle at any point, if, if you have to 
think you need to say a magic silver bullet line that is going to make them change their mind. Clearly, what you are involved in at that moment is not going to be a match. It's just not going to work. Right, hundred percent. And I, some of the best deals you you have are the ones you don't get because absolutely you, it could be you know and and, and that's not a, not a cop out. It's not Jay. Right. Well, I mean, we lost one recently, and I, I oh well, we've lost a few. I mean, trust me. You know, and and if you're a major league baseball player, you're batting 300. You're you're set for life. Um, yep. Our numbers are probably fairly close to that right now, and they weren't before with my last company. I think a lot of it had to do with COVID and other things, but I also think we just honed our skills extremely well with what we're doing. We're, we're qualifying our, our, our clients better. We're delivering our message better, and the market's better. So it's, it's a, it, in that way, it's, it's just it's a good time to be in business for what we do with the right team. But I lost a project recently that was – it was huge, huge. <laughs> And, and it wasn't the financial win that we would have had, which would have been nice, but it was just a, a big, amazing project and everybody knows the property and it would have been a, a, a big feather in our hat, cat, right. whatever it is. We didn't get it. And, and, and honestly, I'm still a little disappointed, but it would have been very, very time consuming and it could have, it would have been very demanding. It was, it was 1700 decision makers you know that that own in this place and then you got the, the board and um a lot of uh it was a lot of interior work which is a lot more challenging and a lot of personnel a lot of opinions so not getting that one possibly was a blessing to us although in, in my world you know oh gee i still would have loved to have had it you know um another one we didn't get because and they bid it somebody bid it i mentioned earlier really low it's going to be a disaster and I, and no one, no one's going to win on that. And the one that what bothers me is the owners of that building are the ones that are going to lose. And they're putting a lot of their hard earned money into this project. And I just, I hate to see bad decisions made. The one that we lost, the other one I was talking about, the huge one, I don't know who they went with and hopefully it's going to be a great company that does a great job for them. I, I, I don't, I, I know that one. It wasn't money that we were charging. They just decided not to go with us. On the other one, there's just no way a good a good result's going to happen. I'm, you know, I've been around too long to know. So, um, that, you know, so that's a little bit of that. Before I I, I forget because we got to jump off in a minute. Nuchel, who was on last week, um, and and Dawn Miller of the Paving Lady are another sponsor today. Um, they are doing a three o'clock. Oh, well, now it's going to be yesterday. Gee, I hate when I do that. Um, <laughs> You can go and look for it <laughs> because they're doing it today and it's live. Ours is live and then then it gets put up later. Um, but um, they're gonna they're doing a, a a a show today that's supposed to be incredible. It's gonna be on LinkedIn. So it's Dawn Miller, Michelle Hastings, women empowering women. Um, so if you want to, y'all want to go look for that. Um, I think that's probably pretty good. So and they're good friends of ours. So when we we support them in everything they do. Absolutely. How much time do we have left on the clock, bro? Uh, we're, 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 we're there. I, I, okay. I think we're there. Right. Okay. One, one question before you hit the off button. Um, how do you get over the losses? What do you do? Do you ever go back to someone and say, can you tell me why we did not get this project? Or do you chalk it up to the universe and say it's abundant and we'll go on and just move on? I, I do like to always point out that God creates the universe. Um, <laughs> terminology um if i can find out why they chose us and why they you know or didn't choose us i, I like to know both on a win and okay. a loss why they chose us um i will keep in touch to a degree but to be honest with you it's tough in our business to once they've done the pre-construction it's hard for us most that's where all the mistakes are made is the first yep. 90 to 180 days so if they try to re-engage us um so, but no, I like doing also, it's kind of a fun thing. So now for any board members, and I know board members see this because they tell me, um, any board member in the future, um, a lot of times when I walk out with either James or George or the three of us, um, whoever else is, if there's more than one with me, you know, me and somebody else, a lot of times we'll talk, talk in the parking lot and that's what we yep. do. We will critique how it went, what went well, 
what didn't go oh, yeah. well, you know, and because we're always trying to hone that. I've always done that in sales on my own, but it's always. fun and they love to engage in that well as well. And, we, and no sugar coating. And I'll sit there and go, gee, I wish I hadn't said that, or I wish we would have elaborated on this, or I'm really glad we did this, and I'm glad we covered that. Let's make sure we do that in the future. So evaluating each other and yourself, and then you can't be sensitive. You know, I, you know, I might get mad at yourself, but I don't, if, if George or James says, hey, Kelly, you know, that wasn't the right way to deliver what you did. Although it's going to hurt my ego, I, I got to take that. And no, right. no, if they're wrong, I'll tell them too. No, no, no. <laughs> but right. but in reality, usually the usually criticism is usually pretty good, and it's how we receive that. And we'll say, yeah, I'm, I'm not going to do. I'm not saying. I'm never saying that one again. And there's right. been times where I, I'm really, you know, and we're going a little bit over. We're going to get in trouble again. With my competitors, I don't want my clients to go down the wrong road, but I also don't want to badmouth other people in the industry period it's and and sometimes you'll accidentally say something and i don't like it i you know so i don't care if anybody says anything bad about me don't say anything bad about my company i'll get upset i want to say oh kelly he's right. a little bit you know, he's a little bit too he's not everybody's cup of tea i'm okay with that whatever yeah but i don't want to be the guy but sometimes when you see him going over you know somebody who's just completely inexperienced trying to compete on our level I, if they can elevate and get up to there, but you know, stay in the minor leagues. Don't when you if you're going to be up here to majors. You know, and I and, and I and I and I got to be really careful with that because I don't want to sit there and tell people, you know, I don't I don't want to sit there and say negative things. But I, I would that you will any client you've ever I've ever talked to in our industry, they'll tell you, wow, Kelly mentioned Amacon as as somebody that he went he would compete against and. And then we met with them and wow, they're really good. As opposed to me mentioned XYZ company, because I know they're gonna they're gonna crash and burn when they meet with them. And but then what's the, what are they gonna say? Well, oh, come on, that wasn't legit. He he just wants the job. It's like a Mercedes salesman go, well, if you want to go look at that, you go, you know, and then come back and, and discuss cars again, you know, say no, go look at that nice new Volvo. Get get some good, strong competition, you know. And so that's that's the way I like to do things, um, and I, okay. you know, I that's that that I sleep well at night because of that. All right, my brother, it's a good way to end this, and we're going to have a special guest that we haven't figured out next week. So you and I will be talking about who we're going to have, and uh, until then, my brother, I'll be catching up with you down the road. See you soon, brother. <laughs>